Revenge of the Sith, the most talked about Star Wars movie and many would call the best Star Wars movie. Nowadays, at least. When I was a kid growing up with the prequels, I loved everything about Revenge of the Sith. The acting, the music, lightsaber fights, and who can forget, the toys. But one constant thing that always felt off to me, even as a youngling, was Anakin's fall to the dark side. It always felt rushed and not as impactful. Today, I want to throw my idea as to how his fall could have gone. Before anything else, I want to state that for me personally, Anakin's turn was motivated by two things that I feel lacked in this movie. And I touched on those in my last video. One is Anakin's relationship to Padme and his relationship to Obi-Wan and to his mother's death. If you want to know exactly what I would have changed, feel free to check out my Attack of the Clones video in the description below. In this movie, continuing that Obi-Wan knows about Anakin and Padme, as well as Anakin being the father of a child, I don't want to change the structure of the movie too much, although I see it playing out as the same at the beginning. Anakin and Obi-Wan returning from saving Palpatine, but Padme wouldn't tell Anakin that she's pregnant right away and right there, especially with a ton of other people standing around. She would tell him during that balcony scene. While she's combing her hair, we would see her struggling to figure out whether to be happy or nervous telling Anakin, but... He would take the news great and tell her that they need to be married. Again, if you're confused as to why they're not married already, check out my last video. Fast forward to a scene where Anakin and Obi-Wan are outside their Jedi starfighters. Obi-Wan is trying to update R4, but he can't. Anakin helps him out, but it ultimately would lead to Anakin telling Obi-Wan that Padme is pregnant. Obi-Wan would obviously be upset as he had urged Anakin to be careful with Padme but ultimately begrudgingly be happy for him. Anakin would tell Obi-Wan that he needs to see his mother and tell her the good news. Obi-Wan would agree, but would tell Anakin he can't cover for him for very long, so he needs to hurry back. Again, you may be confused as to why Anakin hasn't seen his mom yet. I urge you, please go check out my Attack of the Clones video. While back on Tatooine, Anakin would arrive and see Lars and Owen walking back from the graveyard. He would look in disbelief, and only be able to ask what happened. Lars would look at him and say, you weren't here. Your mother's Jedi son wasn't here. Owen would feel bad for Anakin, be there for him, obviously, let him know what happened and tell him that there's a spare room he can use to rest up before heading back. And in the night is when Anakin has his first nightmare of Padme. Now, I touched on those scenes in my other video, but in short, Anakin wouldn't have the dreams of his mother's attack and Padme dying because there's a theory out there that Palpatine was projecting those images of his mother and Padme into Anakin's mind during those two movies. So I'd say that he would have blocked Anakin from knowing about his mother, then projecting Padme's death to further his manipulation. Returning to Coruscant, Anakin would spend a bit more time with Palpatine. Palpatine would hype him up by telling him he deserves to be a Jedi Master. Anakin would agree, as well as believe that becoming a Jedi Master would make him more powerful and make him be able to save Padme. The chamber scene would go as usual. Anakin gets denied and Obi-Wan not speaking out, but only because he couldn't, not being able to speak out of turn during a council meeting. He wouldn't be able to speak with Anakin as to why he didn't say anything because Anakin would just storm out of the temple. Now, I want to shift focus to one scene on the LAAT with Yoda, Mace, and Obi-Wan. During this scene, Obi-Wan would tell the council that Anakin would make a great master, that they were wrong, and that Anakin is the chosen one, as Qui-Gon believed. Again, the movie would play out as it does the amazing opera scene. I personally don't think that those scenes should be touched. And when I say those, I mean the scene where Anakin and Padme are looking to each other while Anakin's waiting in the chambers and the opera scene. Although after the opera scene is where I would have Palpatine reveal himself to be the Sith Lord. But in this case, he would only do so after Anakin admits to him that he's not the Jedi that he should be and he wants more. Then the reveal would play out as it does. One change, though, Anakin would not say he wants to kill or would like to kill Palpatine. He would glance down at his saber, shake his head, 
and then say he's turning Palpatine over to the Council. Chugging along to Anakin's turn, where he cuts off Mace Windu's hand. While this scene is impactful, I believe it could have been a little bit more. Anakin is watching the lightning, hearing Palpatine cry for help. Anakin looks back and forth at Mace and Palpatine, closing his eyes, shaking his head amidst the lightning. He hears Padme cry out, saying, Anakin, as she did in his nightmare. Without hesitation, Anakin's eyes would shoot open. Bam, he cuts off Mace's hand, and out the window he goes. Anakin would pledge himself to Palpatine somewhat reluctantly, only after Palpatine tells him that he's saving Padme, he's taking the power that he's earned, and achieving the potential that the Jedi have been holding him from by becoming his apprentice. And then we have Order 66. The biggest changes for me are that one, Anakin would have a red lightsaber. Now I know with the retcon and how things are now with bleeding crystals and all that good stuff, that it's different. But but hold on for a second. One, Anakin's saber is red, and two, before killing the younglings, Anakin would have a tear roll down his cheek with what he's about to do, knowing he's going to have a child of his own. Yes, I know he has two children, but in the movie, Anakin and Padme only think it's one. They don't know it's twins yet. Now, Padme wouldn't see Anakin again until Mustafar. She would believe that he's dead because last she knew, or last that she thought, he was at the temple. After Order 66, Obi-Wan would go to her apartment as he does, but the setting is nighttime, the temple's still somewhat smoldering in the background, you know, dramatic-like. He'd ask if she was okay and ask if she's seen Anakin, and she would say somewhat confused, no, he was last at the temple. Obi-Wan would drop the news, and now this is where I got help from my buddy, Lazy Pool. Padme would not take the news well, completely denying it, that Anakin couldn't do something like this. I don't know, because he didn't kill innocent children on Tatooine, so that's completely out of character for him. But Obi-Wan would try to explain that they were all deceived by a lie. Padme would stand up, yell at Obi-Wan, and say, it's not true, it's impossible turning and walking to her dresser, grabbing a box, walking back to Obi-Wan and saying he loved the Jedi, he loved helping people. Somewhat echoing what he said in episode one where his mother said the biggest problem in the galaxy is that nobody helps each other. She would open the box and reveal a lightsaber similar to his and say he wanted our child to have this when they were old enough. She'd slowly close the box and begin crying even harder then sit down and Obi-Wan would ask her where he is. She'd say she doesn't know, and then look up at him teary-eyed and say, you're going to kill him, aren't you? Obi-Wan would look her dead in the eyes and say, Anakin is my brother. I need to help him. Now that is where I will end this video, my friends. If you want to see how I would have the Musafar at least back and forth go, Make sure to check it out when it comes out. Not sure when it'll be out, but if you like this episode, want to see more, let me know down below, and I will see you all in the next one.